previously. But Gage, there's one thing we haven't discussed yet, and that was actually what I got on my wheel this time around. On Progression Series Season 2. I got the first ever band tickets. Make it quick. Let me know what's what's not in my deck next week. You know what I think would be a bit more fun? If we made what the viewers think? stick around till next episode to find out what's going to be banned again. No, I think. you don't say. Come on, man. I won this duel, bro. You don't deserve it. In this series, both Nim Nim and myself will be opening 24 booster packs or one box of a core Yu-Gi-Oh! booster set. We will build a deck and play a best two out of three, and the winner will receive a small prize to upgrade their deck. However, in each episode, we will open another box of the next set that was released moving in chronological order, constantly upgrading our decks before dueling each other at the end of each episode. But this time around, we'll be introducing side sets, a new banning system, and plenty of other fun surprises that you'll just have to watch to find out. This is the Yu-Gi-Oh! Progression Series Season 2. If you want 5% off any singles or sealed product, click the affiliate links in the description and use code SEMO5. And clicking the TCG Player affiliate link before you shop helps support us to provide you with more amazing content. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are back in the banning, but not because we're on a lost streak, but because last episode, we spun the first ban ticket of season two of the progression series. This means that even though Gage won last time, we have to redeem that ticket and ban a card right now. So there's a lot of cards that are on the table here. We wanna obviously pick a card that is going to affect Gage and not ourselves. So the cards that are obviously the big standout ones here are cards like Change of Heart and Monster Reborn from previous bannings, but even new cards have entered the fray now, such as Yadagarasu and the like, but I think if we're going to be looking for the long game here, I think Monster Reborn is the hit. Change of Heart versus Monster Reborn, there's an argument for, but I think in a vacuum, Monster Reborn is better. Change of Heart requires me to have a monster, but Reborn, he can just slam it down, get a monster. It doesn't like go back to me at the end of the turn or anything. He gets to keep it permanently, and the longer this card stays around, once we start getting more cohesive strategies, Reborn is going to be a fantastic extender, but now that it's gone, we don't have to worry about it. So let's go ahead and throw it over to Gage so he can spin his wheel for winning last episode before we get into some Magician's Force. Welcome back, everybody. I had to nip Alex's win streak in the butt before it got any more out of control. We're back in the winner circle again. Unfortunately, we did have to survive another banning, though. Man, who designed this wheel? Who figured the ban ticket was a good idea? Looks like our Monster Reborn is no longer in rotation, but it's okay, because I'm going to spin an unbanned ticket. And I'm going to be able to release one of our banned cards. At least that's the dream here, hopefully. There's a lot of other things I can look for, though. Wild card Starlight, any of the wild cards have been treating us super well. So I'm looking forward to Magician's Force today, but I'm also looking forward to this insane wheel, being able to spin it again. Let's see what we get from it. Give it a nice big spin. As I said, I'm looking for really anything here. Uh, the Starlight would be unbelievable. But an unbanned ticket is just as good, bro. Yeah, Alex, how's it feel to ban that monster reborn? I bet it's nice. I'm gonna have Raigeki or Giant Trunade for the next episode. Looking forward to it. Right, so that was probably the best thing I could have picked up from the wheel. Right, so I guess that's the best thing we could have gotten from the wheel there. Taking a card off the ban list is way better than getting a new one added to our pool. So I'm very happy with that. We'll look forward to next episode to see what we want to take off. But we got 24 packs of Magician's Force. Let's see what we can get. You know, in retrospect, I probably should have saved the burn deck for this episode because there's wave motion cannon there's secret barrel there's so many better stall and burn tools that would have made that deck a lot stronger and maybe we could have snuck out a win but it is what it is but magician's force released on october 10th 2003 and this set brings back a lot of childhood memories for a lot of people starting off we have the union subtype which debuted in magician's force something that didn't really see too much play until later on with the abc cards but x y and z are iconic cards for seto kaiba and here's a card i'm not exactly too thrilled to see in this set Kaiser Coliseum. For those of you who watched season one, you'll probably remember that this card rode Gage to a lot of victories because it is a very oppressive floodgate. And honestly, I really wish we could have banned this this time around, but hopefully he's not playing it. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen, the playground staple in wave motion cannon. I'm sure this card evokes tremendously traumatic memories for a lot of you because I know it does for me. And honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if Gage and I are bringing a couple of these to today's duel. Rivalry of Warlords is a floodgate that still sees play to this 
day, and even at this point in the progression series, this card is quite playable. A few other cards of note are the Apprentice Magician, Old Vindictive Magician package. Apprentice Magician, when it's destroyed by battle, you can special summon Old Vindictive Magician, and this card is Maneater Bug on a Dark Monster, which, once we get to Invasion of Chaos, might actually be quite relevant. And there's the man himself, Breaker the Magical Warrior, my favorite card of all time. We actually didn't pull this in Magician's Force, we pulled it in like a Champion Pack or something, which was hilarious, but the fact that we had access to this card was incredible, and I'm hoping we can pull one today. And there it is, the card everyone was waiting for me to talk about, Magical Scientist, the first card ever banned from Season 1 of the Progression Series, and for good reason, this card is broken as Fuck. May not be super relevant at the moment, but as soon as we start getting to the Synchro Xyz era, you're going to see this card making the main deck, and I wouldn't be surprised if this card gets banned very quickly once that happens. Tribe Infecting Virus is also a standout card from Magician's Force. Uh, just being able to nuke the board by discarding cards, very powerful, and only a super rare. We both missed this last time, so maybe that'll be different this time around. Cliff the Trap Remover is another good way to deal with spells and traps, as long as it inflicts battle damage. Desk Koala is a very strong burn card as well, and Magical Merchant, you know, Gage claims that he pulled some of these in Season 1, although Though I don't see it, but you know, I played Dragon Zombie a few episodes ago, so I think we're even now. Even cards like Mass Driver debuted in Magician's Force, and while this may not be relevant till we get to like the Shining Darkness and Substitute, still a powerful FTK enabler nonetheless, and my body is a shield, I wouldn't be surprised if this card makes our main decks today, because this allows us to stop cards from getting removed. Incredibly powerful effect. Overall, Magician's Force is just a standout set, and while it may not be the most powerful set compared to some of the ones in the past, I think it harbors a lot of good memories for people of playing Yu-Gi-Oh! on the playground. So let's go ahead and move on to our tournament pack for our pity pack. There's actually some reasonably good cards we could get from this pack. So let's go ahead and see what we're going to be getting this time around. And holy crap, this is actually pretty nice. Tomato, we already have three of, but Giant Rat was a card that we actually didn't get out of uh, Magic Ruler. So the fact that we can now search uh, Fairy Lily from our deck is kind of nice if we want to play it. And Gravity Bind is very interesting because we want to run back the burn deck. This is one of the best floodgates we could have, especially if Gage wants to play Beatdown again. So I'm pretty happy to see that. I'm going to add that to the collection. Let's go ahead and open 24 packs of Magician's Force. Pack number one with an ultra rare off the bat, and it's a poopy one. It is one that I just do not care about. Mass Driver, Superman, and Autonomous Action Unit. Pretty cool. Wave Motion Cannon. This is one of the commons I'm looking to grab three of. I think we might be going with a burn strategy today to keep Alex on his toes. We went with just straight beat down last episode, but if we double back to burn and stun, maybe he won't be prepared for it. I remember somebody telling me he doesn't have any swarm of scarabs or swarm of locusts, so it might be a little bit difficult for him to deal with it. Something to look forward to. Super Rare and the Skill Dark Magician. Actually, not a bad one. This guy is just 1900 beats, which it's not bad on its own. Magical Scientist, the forever banned guy. Won't be really relevant until we get to XYZs and we can actually use those fusion monsters, stack them on top of each other and do some wacky shit with that. But he is Hall of Fame for a reason. Secret Barrel is also a really sick common. All right, 24 packs of Magician's Force coming right up. Let's see what we're going to have in pack number one. Super rare skilled Dark Magician right off the bat. I wish this was Tribe Infecting Virus, but a 1900 beater is not the worst. Whoa, and there is a secret rare Dark Magician Girl. Now, to be fair, the secret rares of Magician's Force are kind of bad for progression series, but, you know, it's a Dark Magician Girl. It's iconic. Uh, but, you know, of note, we also did get a secret barrel, which is pretty good if we want to go burn again. So, I mean, it's not the worst. Very happy to see Cliff the Trap Remover, because this card can destroy spells and traps if it hits in, and so I really wanted to get a couple of these just for the side deck at the very least. There's a rivalry. Pineapple Blast is technically removal, so we'll consider this. An Autonomous Action Unit is actually Monster reborn in an equip spell at the cost of 1500 life points, but it only works on our opponent's graveyard. So uh, it's neat that we actually get a follow-up play potentially, but it is very high risk. There's another super rare X-Head Cannon. I really wish this was Tribe. That would have been so much better, but honestly, I don't care because this pack not only has Old Vindictive Magician, but Magical Scientist. There have been instances where Gage and I do not get common cards out of these sets, so the fact that we have our one in the bank makes me feel very good for the future. Another Cliff the Trap Remover and our first copy of Magical Merchant. Very nice to see that so we can dig for some of our power spells and traps not bad <laughs> so here's the problem with this set is that there's a lot of dud hollows because of the fusions xz tank cannon is the pull i guess because we pulled x head cannon this is technically playable but i'm not holding my breath oh wow that's a sick ultra rare <laughs> dark paladin i can't use it but that is a really really cool card to see in the pack oh man that sucks i mean both the secrets dark magician girl and diffusion wave are both not very good but i really just don't want to see that i'd rather see any other hollow magical merchant though we finally have it in the collection ladies and gentlemen very cool dark core some interesting removal and i 
ain't even gonna talk about Z-Metal Tank, dude. This set is really, like, it's iffy. Okay, another super rare. Literally nothing to talk about. Royal Magical Library is big. I'd like to pick up more of these. God, bro, I don't, I don't need a second Z-Metal Tank, please. Dark Core is actually decent removal. I think Raigeki Break is a little bit better just because it's more versatile because we can hit stuff in the back row as well. But Dark Core can banish monsters, and that is quite relevant if it's something like a Sangen or a Witch. There's our first My Body. I was a bit nervous that we hadn't seen one of these yet about halfway through the opening, but at least we have one. And speaking of cards we haven't seen much of, there's our first Wave Motion Cannon, as a matter of fact. So uh, one of these down. I would like to get a couple more potentially, but uh, we'll see. We're halfway through the opening. Another Secret Barrel, another Desk Koala if we want to go down the Burn Strat. If we got a play set of this, I think Burn is definitely on the table. I, it's just my luck. Honest to God, it's just my luck. I got my three Wave Motion Cannon. This could have been Breaker the Magical Warrior times two. I would have been silly, but no, we get two Dark Paladin. Okay. Another Ultra Rare. I got a whole bunch of Ultra Rares this set, but I don't think anything of them are too crazy. I don't think Amazon is Swords Moment that great either, right? No, absolutely not. I'm pretty sure this is like a uh, speed duel card. Coming up with the last few packs here, can I get anything big in the close? Skilled White is just another beat stick guy here. I did get really lucky on the hollow pools. I got a whole bunch of them, but uh, none of them really too relevant. All right, coming up with the last pack. Anything big? No. We got like three Dark Core. We got our Mass Driver. We got our Triple Wave Motion Cannon, which was the big thing I was looking for this time. And I guess we got a couple Magical Merchants. Really nothing else I was looking for besides maybe a Breaker. I am going to lock it in. Bam. Put it in there. Let's get building. Let's see what we got today. Are you fucking kidding me? Two Dark Magician Girls. What the hell am I supposed to do with that? <laughs> My secret rare luck in Season 2 is actually absurd. This is unbelievable. All right, you guys. So only a few packs left of Magician's Force and uh, the last half of this opening has not looked too promising, so let's hope the last packs here in the close can help. There's an Apprentice Magician. I'm happy to see this because it technically searches Old Vindictive, but uh, we could just play Old Vindictive by itself. We don't need Apprentice for that, so that's an okay rare. Let's flip up our second to last pack. Well, there's two Apprentice Magicians, so I guess I willed that upon myself. All right, uh, last pack here. Let's see if there's anything good in the close. Doesn't look like it. Was there anything even good in the comments? No, I don't think so. Okay, so now I have to think if I possibly want to use a redoer ticket on this set because we did get magical scientists we did get a wave motion cannon we got a couple of old vindictives we got apprentice magicians no copies of tribe no copies of breaker but we did get play sets of everything else so like we got my body we have a lot of other good stuff so honestly i think i'm gonna keep it i think those cards are pretty expendable although they are very powerful so let's go ahead and add it to the collection and get to some deck building keep it Alex on his toes. Like I said, we're switching up the strategy 100%. We're going towards more of a Pac-Man strat. Pac-Man is a strategy that was near unbeatable back in the day. Just utilizing cards like Swarm of Locusts, Deslacuda, as well as our floodgates that we saw with clown control like Vengeful Bog Spirit, as well as Dark Door, which is one that I like personally. The whole goal of the deck is to just stun out the opponent, net massive value with Deslacuda, and then our win con is Wave Motion Cannon. Something that I think is super effective because Alex has no spell or trap removal whatsoever. Whatsoever, besides his stamping destruction. He went with Chain Burn last episode, which was a weird choice. I think I clobbered him up good enough so he doesn't double back on that. And I think he's going to try to pick up a new strategy today. The only thing that I could see him getting in the set would be like Breaker the Magical Warrior to outweigh Motion Cannon. Other than that, I just know if he doesn't play the dragons, he has no out. So we're dealing with a whole bunch of flippy boys like Swarm of Scarabs and Locust and Deslacuda. As you remember in last episode, Alex, I think, told us he didn't get any of these. So this strategy is not on the table for him, but it's something we can definitely toy with. Whole bunch of burn to hopefully deal out the game and DD see different dimension capsule this is pretty much a worse golden sarcophagus this card does the same exact thing but it has to remain on the field when you activate it uh, and if it gets removed you don't get your card that was face down we're going to be using this to pick up our wave motion cannon in tandem with something like painful choice just being able to dump five cards out the deck should be able to get us more reliably to wave motion and we just gotta wait eight turns maybe less if we ring a destruction or nightmare wield something we win the game as i said before this is something i wouldn't explore if alex didn't tell me he didn't have any pac-man stuff i have a feeling he's going to switch around his strategy from burn today i don't have a feeling he double backs on that so uh, we'll see how this goes. From what I've heard about Pac-Man, though, this deck is near unbeatable. Ready to put it to the test. Let's see how you do, Alex. Okay, I'm feeling pretty good this episode. Monster Reborn is banned, so that's a relief. But I'm looking at this deck, and this looks pretty competent. Now, Gage is going to go one of two ways this episode. He's either going to stick to the same beatdown deck he played last time because he actually saw a good amount of success with it, or he's going to try to outplay me and go burn if he pulls wave motion cannons because he knows he has the better control package with gravity bind and everything. So he could actually put me on lock pretty well. So I have like this 
this sort of mid-range deck developed here so that way we can take on the beatdown deck if that's what he's going with but hopefully be able to possibly contend with some of the burn stuff as well so let's go ahead and do the card by card first up cyber jar of course it's like our last resort and it's just a crazy fun card especially for the progression series one dream clown is in here for giant rats specifically because on the end of an attack chain we can actually go into a dream clown next turn switch the dream clown to defense pop something that way we don't have to burn it on like exiled force because this is just better removal all around giant rats actually a pretty nice addition from that tournament pack so i'm grateful that i got that then we have our three spies and one guard these are fantastic walls if gauge is deciding to go on that beatdown strat once more and then i'm playing one fairy lily i'm a bit iffy about this because if gauge is playing burn this is absolutely a terrible idea but this card just can end the game very quickly out of nowhere we can get this off of rat which is pretty nice as well it can also hit over a lot of very annoying things we may find ourselves faced with so that's why this is in here we'll see how it goes we also have jinzo in here as like the all-star for being able to just stop all the traps whether he's playing beatdown or he's playing burn or control this card is fantastic haven't seen a lot of him in season two of progression series which is odd but hopefully that changes we have one merchant merchant just good to get into our power spells and traps and we're playing more monsters but honestly it's fine triple tomato just can search a majority of our deck this is sort of like tomato control in all honesty and uh because we have three tomato we should take advantage two new doria is here just for more removal i have so much removal in this deck if he's going beat down that he's going to regret it heavily we'll see how it goes Two old vindictive magician in line with that philosophy because you know what's better the removal than having more removal right we have sangan which can search a majority of our deck one skill dark magician and one zombire of the dark i just wanted two cards that were just going to be big bodies that i don't have to waste like one for one removal on right this can actually topple some of his larger threats and skill dark magician has no downside zombire can't attack directly and slowly incrementally gets weaker but honestly i just want some bodies that gauge may have to waste resources on and i figure this is better than something like raigeki break which is vulnerable to like my body as a shield so i figure we'll see how this goes also one spirit reaper rounding out the monsters the spells delinquent duo double fisher i'm playing one my body again if he's on burn this is probably going to come out but if he is playing the beatdown deck there is a decent amount of removal in gauge's deck and being able to protect our established board protect something like tomatoes to ensure that it dies by battle is a fantastic use of this card pot of greed premature reinforcements this can actually get a lot in this deck and so i'm happy to have this one spiritualism rounding out the spells because i don't have mst so this is the next best thing then for the traps double bottomless and imperial order triple michizure a ring of destruction a robin goblin a torrential and a trap dust shoot so overall this deck looks pretty solid but again it's going to heavily depend on what gauge is running today let's go ahead and do the side deck so the plan is for the side deck that if gauge is playing like clown control or just straight up burn i am going to side deck into 15 fucking cards i'm going to bring in cliff the trap remover i'm bringing in the gray wing spear dragon dragon dwelling in the cave package for stamping destruction i've got two swarm of locusts as well and two regeki breaks literally like 10 of the 15 cards in my side deck are in here to specifically take care of gauge's back row and so if he thinks he's going to try to get away with any of that bullshit we are just not having it honestly cliff could actually make a pretty decent argument for making its way into the main deck because it is searchable off tomato because it's a dark it's under the threshold for sangen as well it's level three so it hits under gravity bind and it just has a lot going for it it's also a warrior which is searchable via rota as well so i don't know no more i'm talking myself into this i may actually want to main deck one of these <laughs> yeah now that i'm thinking about it i'm slightly nervous for what gauge might be bringing and i'm a bit weaker to the burn side considering i actually have almost no interaction with that deck so maybe we're gonna do this i'm gonna put in the cliff and two regeki breaks i'm gonna take out this robin goblin which i accidentally just took out of my collection put that in the side i'm gonna put a michizure in the side as well and i think i'm gonna put merchant in the side i don't think merchants um, i don't know merchant can actually search for a uh, regeki break potentially so maybe we keep that in there if i think he's on burn maybe let's move my body to the side and actually put in another one as well i do have three of this card so that way if he is on the beatdown strat i can just side into two my bodies and uh, put the third michizure back in just for a little bit more removal i think this makes sense okay so let's go ahead and lock that in i think this is a little bit more well-rounded than before so that way we're covering our bases just slightly in you know for hedging against like clown control or burn i think this makes sense but uh obviously we'll see it's very weird when we have just terrible spell and trap removal but it's interesting because we have this sort of like rock paper scissors game going on of like beat down control and burn so we're gonna see what happens guys i can't wait to see what gauge brought to the table let's go ahead and try to take back that winner circle ladies and gentlemen it's time to duel alex we gotta figure this out man 
Who invented okay. the band ticket on the wheel, dude? <laughs> I felt so bad having to take out my monster reborn today. Who decided there's a 10% chance to just, you know, <laughs> fail three games in a row, ban a car, no problem. Then who did? Was that your idea? You did. This was your <laughs> idea. <laughs> was it? Damn, bro. I'm, I'm fairly certain this was your idea. This is, yes. the, this is why I, nobody leaves me in charge of anything from deck building to creating I a guess, series, dude. <laughs> I guess. And like why you're in the lead in this series is beyond me. So, I mean, maybe we need to change that for yeah, sure. Okay, but we'll see. I will say it feels so nice knowing that Reborn is gone because holy shit. Uh, I mean, there's, there's a lot of cards I would like to see banned out of your pool, but eh, I think Monster Reborn's definitely like the one it's for the definitely up there you've, you've sure. been picking them off one by one here i'm already down three cards in my collection i worked hard to pull those man i'll have you know so, you did yeah. you did <laughs> hopefully i can yeah. get them back someday but so far i have no monster reborn no giant true nate and no raigeki in my deck list rest assured bud and to be fair even if we pull them in the future with the side sets i won't have them either yep. so you know at least you can you know sleep well knowing that that <laughs> won't be the case in like dark beginning or something like that but uh magician's force how you feeling about the set um i hey it has magical merchant in it remember that last season i never got any of those i was about to say yeah you never had a single copy <laughs> i'll have you know i did pull at least two of them so very exciting all right They're already better than there last you season. go but um no you're I, gonna have some actual lights for your chaos emperor this right? time around. right no i don't think uh, i don't think magician's force is that crazy there's a lot of like lower end actually like the low rarity stuff is pretty cool but the higher stuff like you how do we go from cards like imperial order jinzo yada Garasu, and then now we have yep. diffusion wave motion <laughs> and then <laughs> fucking dark magician girl like i, I don't get it but I, overall i think some of the low rarity stuff is really good in this set. I agree. I agree. And I cannot wait to talk about my higher rarity stuff after we finish this episode. But let's go ahead and shout out the patron. It is Michael Parsons. Thank you for the support. And uh, hopefully you can guide me to win this rock, Thank paper, you, scissors. Nope. Thank you. Not Michael. happening. I appreciate you, bud. All right, Gage. Uh, first, going first or second has been an interesting decision in the series. So I'm curious to see what you're cooking. It has been, but I think for the strategy, Alex, that I've brewed up today, okay. I want to, I don't know, man. We're going to see how it works. I'm going to go first, okay? Okay. All right. I have a hunch the direction you might be going because uh, I thought something similar. <laughs> so right. good luck, buddy. Good luck, bud. Let's see how it goes. Okay. I will activate Pot of Greed to start. Oh my god, I swear you've it's opened only Pot of fair, Greed. Like, man. It it's only fair, man. It's only fair. How is this fair? What, I ban your Reborn? You get to <laughs> magnetize Pot of Greed to your fucking opening hand? Whatever, it's draw your card. Fair. All right, I drew my two. I'm going to activate. I, I put this in my deck now. Uh, it gives you a lot of information what I might be on here, though. Okay. No, because you have IO, and that would be scary. All right, I'm going to activate Painful Choice. Here it is. All right, let's see what your five cards are going to be. Right, but let's see how I can uh, make it a little bit difficult. I'm going to take out different dimension capsule on the capsule. Okay. 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 Let me ask you this while you're thinking about your other picks. Did we just not pull this card or did we just not play it? I honestly it? think we just didn't even consider it. I didn't even remember. Okay. I forgot this card existed, honestly. So, okay. All right. So I'm going to pull out the DDC. I'm going to do that times two. <laughs> okay. Sure. Uh, I will pull out, I'll pull out a United We Stand. Okay. Bro, it's turn one. How am I how am I how, how am I struggling this much? Oh my god. I you know why? Because I banned three yeah, of the yeah, best yeah. painful <laughs> choice targets. I'll pull out the mage power too. And um for my last card, I will pull out I don't know if there's any good. You'll just forcibly give it to me if it's not. Um, I'll pull out Gravity Bind. Interesting. You know, okay, so at first when I saw like United We Stand Mage Power, I'm like, okay, I see what he's up to. And then you throw in the Gravity Bind and I'm like, what the fuck are you doing now? I could now? be on anything. Honestly, you could be. Um, interesting decision here. I'm not giving you Gravity Bind. I will, uh, I'll say All that. All right, so you got a couple sure. level fours in your deck. Good to know. Two of your cards are the same, so this is really a choice between three cards. Uh, honestly, between United We Stand and Mage Power, I think, if you're playing Gravity Bind, honestly, I think Mage Power is a bit scarier, because that lends me to believe that you're playing something that might just be, like, hitting under Gravity Bind and can just play a bunch of back row. So, I'm actually sort of at this point between United and Capsule. Capsule basically lets you get the best card in your deck, but you don't get it for two turns. Plus, if I have a way to destroy it, then you actually don't get it at all. You ain't so got any that. of those, right? You have no spell trap no. removal. I already know it. <laughs> Not at all. Not at all. Uh, and then United We Stand's like sort of whatever. This is tricky based off like how my hand looks as well. This is weird based off of what I just said. I'm actually going to give you mage power. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll take it. All right. So everything else goes to grave. No problem. Correct. All right. I will follow it up. I will set a card 
I'll set a face down and I'll activate Vengeful Bog Spirit. Back on this. Okay. All right, man. Yep. Your turn. Mage power in hand, presumably. I don't know why you would set it, but, you know, could be anything, I guess. Uh, anything in standby, nope, buddy. You're good. Main phase one's fine. All right. Main one it is. Now this gets irritating because if you're on like Pac-Man, which might make the most sense what you're doing, especially if you're playing Gravity Bind, I have to consider that your set can be something that can just be flipped and start taking apart my board. And that's kind of annoying. It could also just be nothing. Uh, I'll Rota. Okay, yeah. Let's grab the good old Force of the Exile. Sure. I'll run him out. Thank God there's no priority because I'm going to flip up Ring of Destruction. Okay. We'll both take Fair. a stack. So no problem. We'll both take a stack here. Yep. Uh, that was like the only card that interacted with that, but that's fine. Uh, I <laughs> better will... have it. Better have it. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I guess. I'll set a pair and I'll just throw it your way. Right, Go no, ahead. Way. Uh, I will draw for turn. Standby phase, main phase. All good. Okay, cool. Uh, I'll flip up. You ready for this? Sure. Deslacuda. It is Pac-Man. It is Pac-Man. Oh, a little bit me. of a Nim Nim variant, if you will. I'm going to draw my card off of Deslacuda. Sure. That's fine. So, Okay, cool. So, Vengeful Box Spirit stopping this from attacking, but the value train has already begun. I will activate Deslacuda to set it. Sure. Okay, I'll set another card, and I will set a face down, and I will just pass it to you, Duelist. You know, Joseph has said that Pac-Man is a deck that basically just can't win, and so you put a card in the deck that makes it so that you won't be able to win even uh, harder, so I find that kind of fun. I do what I can, man. I do what I can. You know that's my specialty, <laughs> not winning, so. That, you know, yeah, it's true. <laughs> Uh, I wish I could, you know, say that considering you're up in the series, but uh, it is what it is. All right, so you've got Lakuda. Lakuda's going to start getting you a ton of advantage, which I'm not super thrilled about. I'll just set one, and I'll set another, and I will throw it your That's way. That's my favorite play, man. All right, I'm going to draw for turn, okay? I'm going to think in standby. Sure. <gasps> the four cards in hand? Hot dust shoot coming in. Yeah, I'm not thrilled about it. I'm going to Regeki break oh. the Lakuda. Oh my. Okay, see you, Gravekeeper Spy. Lakuda's gone. Kind of sucky, but that's all right. Yeah, go to main one. You're good. Okay, uh, main phase one. All right, well, I guess uh, I will set a card. Play around Dust Shoot now. Um, let's get pumping. I will flip up Swarm of Locusts, and I will activate Locusts, and I will target the fresh set. Um... Locus is pretty good. I will chain my own ring of destruction. Nice. All right, you're gonna get rid of the uh, the swarm. Yes. All right, no problem. I'll take a grand. You and me both. All right. And now both of our rings are gone. They are both so. gone. Yep. <laughs> All right. I will just set a card, and uh, I'll just pass it over to you, Alex. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, we'll draw. That's not terrible. Still got sets. I'll flip up this spy. Okay. Yeah. I'll trigger him. Sure. We'll get another. So run him out. Uh, can't attack because of Bog Spirit, so I'm actually just going to set one and throw it your way. Okay. Um, I will drop. I'll go standby phase, main phase. Sure. <clears throat> I will set a card. Okay. And I will set another. Your move, Alex. Go ahead. Interesting position here. You didn't flip your old set, which tells me it's not a Pac-Man monster because you could have easily gotten value off of it. So, okay. Uh, I don't know what I'm gonna worry myself with, but we'll see. I'll draw anything in standby. Nope, you're good. Main one it is then. There are a few things it could be. What would you not flip? I guess since you said you got merchants, you could have merchant. That's a possible. No, yeah, you could have just flipped that though. Oh, uh, I guess you don't have to. That kind of just like makes you take damage for no reason. Uh, could be your recruit. I don't even know if this deck plays recruiters. I guess you could play like, I don't know, uh, whatever. I'm going to flip old vindictive and pop your old set. Fuck. Oh, yeah. It was a recruiter. You did have the read. That was fine. Okay. Back. Okay. Uh, interesting. Very interesting. So you still have a set now. Let's try. F mm. Yeah, we'll try for it. I'm going to sack old vindictive for Jinzo. That is strong, but that is okay. Okay. I will put the spy to attack. Yeah. I will hit this spy in. Okay, so the spy goes in. I'm going to allow that. It is my own Gravekeeper spy. It's your own spy. Yeah. Okay, so, so I'm going to take eight here. Yeah, and I'm going to special off spy. Okay. Pull up guard. Sure. You're walled up. Can't do much there. So I will overlay for Utopia. <laughs> yeah, ahead. yeah. All right. <laughs> okay, uh, thinking real quick. Uh, I will draw for turn. Standby phase, main phase. All right, I'm going to put the uh, spy to attack. 
Mage power time. Yep. yep. I'll flip up the mage power in the imperm column. Sure. Right. <laughs> I'll go, of course, you know I'm equipping it on this guy. We'll yeah. go battle phase and I'll poke over your Jinzo. Hear me out, Gates. That spy could be 3,900 defense if you didn't, but yeah, that's fine. <laughs> uh, so you're at 32 to my 24, so I take eight. Nice. And then uh, I'll Michi Zure. And I will kill, I imagine, the spy. Yeah, I'll kill the spy. Okay. Uh, yep. Yeah, spy can go. That's fine. He did his job. Uh, mage power with it. And then I will go main phase two. Mm -hmm. I will set a monster and uh, go ahead. Your turn. Yeah, I was really hoping that did not have something that could just withstand a spy hit. So you didn't have any opportunity to mage power, but... That is how it is. Let's go ahead and flip a spy. Mm, I guess I don't have to do that now, necessarily. I'll go to battle. I'll hit him with the spy. Okay, it's uh, <laughs> bumps with the spy, right. it's witch. Excellent. All right. Uh, second main, I'll put this spy to defense. I'm going to set one, and I'm going to set one, and I'll throw it okay. to you. Okay, I will draw. Standby phase, main phase. I'm going to tribute off this witch for a unknown face down monster. Could be anything. Could be anything. I'm going to trigger a witch. Sure. All right, off the witch, I'll pick up. Uh, I'll pick up the scarabs. I'll start get to picking off this board if I can. Makes sense. Yep. Nothing else. Your turn. Let's see what we get. Uh, that's not too great. Is it an out to my totally unknown face down monster? Mm, don't know about that, buddy. Don't know about that. Is there any weird shenanigans we can do? I do not think so. I will just send spy sideways, and I'll pass it back. Okay. Uh, I will drop. Sphinx me, buddy. I am going to do that. Flip some in the Sphinx. I'll bounce all your dudes. Okay. I bottomless for the Sphinx. Oh, all right, Alex. In response to the bottomless trap hole, uh, it has to check that the monster is 1,500 or more. So I'm going to activate Book of Moon, and I'm going to flip down the Sphinx. So strong. Super strong. So strong. And I'm going to yep. wipe those All right. Off. Yep. They're back. Nice. Um, cool. And uh, let's just get it into control mode. I will set a card. And um, I'll put this guy to attack, and I'll poke you for a grand. Sure. I'll take it. <laughs> Why not? All right, dude. Your move. Okay. Uh, we'll draw. I will set one and pass. Yep. I'll draw. Stand by main. Normal Sangin. Sure. Uh, I'll flip Scarab. Pop. Was New Doria. Mm -hmm. Just trying to see if you might take the bait. Nope. Uh, not today, buddy. I will activate the Scarab to set it. Yep. Uh, this is a clock you're on here currently, so I'm just going to go battle, and I'll do a thousand. Sure. All right, bud. Uh, your turn. We'll draw. Uh, it's pot agreed. I don't know if it'll do you much, but okay, go ahead. We'll see. Wow. Uh, yikes. I'll just set one and pass. Go ahead. Deal. I'll draw. Stand by main. Yep. I will flip swarm, pop. Spy. Yep, and I'll set the swarm. Sure. Battle. Sink for two. Not dead. Not dead. Very close, though. Main two, I'll set a card and uh, go ahead. Possibly have outs. That is not one of I'll them. All right. I'll take the game. Game two. two. Game two. Okay, Gage. Uh, you know, it's funny because I think when we talked like an episode or two ago, you were just like saying that this is this is not the way to go whatsoever. So I don't know if you were trying to just throw me off all the way back then, but uh, I, I mean, was it probably worked pretty well. referring to you because I remember somebody told me last episode he didn't get too lucky with his swarm of scarabs or locusts. I did not. So I did I not. Maybe I shouldn't have, have uh, said anything about that. Yeah, you didn't have a chance. So I was like, man, there ain't no way he's going to see me coming up on this, especially after that super fast beatdown deck last week. So I uh, figured I'd Want to take a step, you know, off to the side, mix yeah. you up a little oh. bit. So I'm ready. To I'm gonna go you. second. So uh, go ahead. Let's All see what you're up to. the better for me, bro. It would be nice if I drew the one card I want, but that's okay. All right, I'm gonna go main. Oh no, one. pot of greed this time. <laughs> Boo! <-hoo. laughs> oh, no. I'll set one, two, three, and since you have no back row removal, I'll set the. Go ahead, dude. All right, uh, we'll draw. Anything to stand by? Nope, you're good. Okay, uh, main one it is then. Oh, I figure we gotta. See if we can connect something here. Uh, I'm going to run out a new card. Cliff the Trap Remover. Let me read what this guy does here when he inflicts battle damage. Oh, it's back row removal. There you it go. It is. Yeah, it's All not right. bad. Well, Cliff is A-OK. -okay. Uh, we'll try to hit in here. You will topple over it, but it's only Mystic Tomato. So okay. I'm going to activate Tomato. Sure. Okay. Tomato, I am going to pull out... How much attack does Cliff have? 12. Okay. It's not very big. He's not. How much defense does but Cliff have? A thousand. Okay. All right. I'll bring out the swarm of scarabs. 
Okay. Seems like the best choice. And uh, Second okay. main, then. I'll just set a few. And uh, over to you, buddy. All right, I'll draw. Standby sure. phase, main phase. Sure. Okay, uh, I'll activate Scarab. Thinking on activation. We got some effect negation. What's going on here? Okay. Yeah, I think i um, considering here... It's weird because these old cards like Swarm, if you flip it and pop my cliff, you basically wouldn't be able to reset it then? That's interesting. I'm just not gonna chance it. I'm just gonna ring it and just get it out of here. Ugh, the fucking ring. Um, Ring is so good, dude. Oh my God. Yeah, it is. That's really strong. All right, in response to your ring of destruction, I'm actually gonna activate Book of Moon and I'm gonna target this the This fucking swarm. book, dude. Oh my God. Yeah, fine. Okay, so I will set the Swarm. And then I'll flip it and I'll pop your cliff. Yep. I'm going to normal summon Witch of the Black Forest. Sure. And I'm going to go battle phase. I'll go five and 11. Take 16. All right. The Scarabs is now in attack position, man. Super spooky. Uh, I will just pass my turn to you. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, we'll draw. When there is one cliff, there's another. <laughs> Understandable. Yep. <laughs> we'll hit the swarm. Good thing I got the owl for it. I'm going to activate Rageki Break. I'm going to pitch Mage Last Power. card, too. Try to pop the cliff. Uh, cliff down. All right. Uh, in that case, pretty low on cards though, which makes me feel slightly good. Uh, I'll just pass. Go ahead. Nice. I'll draw. Stand my main. Yep. Uh, I will normal summon Deslacuda. Sure. I'll go battle phase. I'll poke for 21. 21 all in. Yep. All right. Main phase two. I'm going to activate Des and Swarm. And, uh, go ahead. Now this puts me in an interesting position here for sure. Uh, I'll go to main phase one. Uh, how do I want to do this? Oh, fuck. Getting rid of one? Not going to do the trick? <laughs> no, I I fucked something up, but we were too enthralled in what we were doing that I just missed something. I'm going to run out Gravekeeper's Guard. Okay. Going to hit Lakuda. Yep, that's fine. Lakuda down. Second main set one over to you. All right, I will draw. Yep. Stand by me. Sure. I'll flip up Swarm. Pop. Sure. Uh, I'll Michi Zuri the Swarm. Okay. That's fine. And then I'll go battle for 11. Yep. Main two, I'll set a card. Your move. Draw. I will... I'm going to have to do this. I'm going to set and pass. All right. Hey, it doesn't sound like it's a good move for you, man. I'm going to draw. Yeah. Stand by main. What I guess I'll get a little peek, man. Let me see. Cyber Jar. Oh, okay. All right, cool. All right, game on. So I'm not thrilled about it, but... Let's do it. All right, so All right, turn so player. Uh, I'm going you go to first. Banish five. Nice. Okay. Okay. That's Couple. pretty good. So uh, I will hand, 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 and then these two are on the field. I'll decide their positions and everything once you do yours. Sphinx change. Uh, what was it? tie you? Oh wait, or do I decide? Do I decide their positions now? I think we've been doing it now. I think I. I, I think it. It only makes sense I have to now, right? Right. Because if and I, then decide, I do I can mine. Just set them. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Cool. So I'll do both an attack. Okay. Uh, so you have Sphinx, Actually, Change of Heart, and Tie You. I'm gonna do. Sorry. I'm gonna do Sangin an attack and uh, Gravekeeper. Spine defense. defense. That's yeah. fine. All right. You're good. Okay. My turn. Reaper. Okay. Uh, it's something, I guess. Uh, so Reaper. Exiled. Uh, and then these three. Oddly enough, bro, that exiled force is so stupid. <laughs> right? You're gonna it's set the perfect both of them? stats. I am gonna set both of them. Okay. And then what did you add? I'm sorry, you added prema. It was premature burial, Fisher, and another Michizuru. And now you get your witch search. I do. And then would you like to shuffle these positions? Oh yes, I forgot I'm allowed to do that. Yeah. Could matter. Okay, and off of my Witch of the Black Forest. This isn't easy. I haven't normal summoned yet. You have not. What was the face downs again? It was Exiled and Exiled Hopeful. Reaper. Okay, um, off of Witch, I will pick up an Exiled of my own. That makes sense. Main two? Oh, wait, I'm still in battle. I might have a play here. Yeah, that's kind of odd. Okay, still in battle. I'm going to poke into this face down. It is Reaper. Shit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was like the one I didn't want. Um... Main two. Exiled's cool here, but I mean, you have a problem with each one of these. Like, you can stop my removal or you can stop my thing that prevents you from killing me. Yeah. So it's a weird choice. That's if you even want to do that. I, I do want to do that. I want to get rid But you have pre mat so it's like, eh, I'm going to make you waste it. I'm going to summon my own Exiled Force. Sure. And I'm going to activate it. I'm going to pop your face down, Exiled. 
Okay. Okay. Um, I will just go to end phase. Your turn. Okay. Uh, so I know... Spies the face down monster. And I know everything in your hand except one card. Correct. Yes. Okay. I will draw. Main one. I am going to preem for exiled. Thought you might. Okay. That's fine. All right. So we'll grab exiled force. There you go. All right. Exiled sack pop spy. Yes, that is fine. Okay. That's taken care of. I will. I'm going to set... And I'm going to set two. I'm going to throw it over to you. All right. I'm going to draw for turn. Yep. Standby phase, main phase. Sure. All right. Give me a peek. I'm going to activate Book of Tayu. I'm going to flip your face down, face up. Figured you were going to do that. Uh, so it's old Vindictive Magician. I'll pop your Sangin. Yeah. Outplayed. All right. I'll get my Sangin search. No problem. It's not really outplayed. I still popped your Sangin, of all <laughs> things. I was hoping you would maybe, like, sack for Sphinx, and then I could, like, pop that. But, you know... Oh, That's goes. pretty good. I'll take it. Um, I'm going to pick up a giant rat off of the Sangin. Sure. I'm going to drop him down. Big rat, man, if it lets me hear. Sure. The rat's fine. The rat's going to tussle with the magician here. Is going to tussle. Take, what, 950 here? Yeah, that's fine. Uh, I'll Michi Zuri the rat. Yeah, that's fine. Bye, rat. Okay, cool. I'll go main two. I'll set another card, and I'll just pass it over to you. Okay. Uh, I'll draw. It's not a bad one. My life points are a bit low is the only issue now. I've got three in hand. I know you have Change of Heart Sphinx. One other one I don't know. I'll run out New Doria. Okay. Hit for 12. Uh, I'm going to activate Nightmare Wheel on your New Doria here. Ooh. Stop it from attacking, and then put you on a clock, dude. You got three turns to be able to deal with me. Does put me on a clock. Adult. So I will take the damage on uh, your standby phase. Yep. Okay. Oh, uh, that's kind of annoying. All right. Uh, second main in that case, I will throw it over, and I'll just take my five now. All right. Cool. Uh, I will set one and two, and uh, I'll just pass it over to you okay uh let's see if we can figure out a way out of this i'll draw i'm gonna go ahead and sack off the nidoria for jinzo okay well wow, it's kind of fucked okay so the wheel goes uh i'll hit your set oh, the wheel doesn't go it just stays but it doesn't do oh it just stays oh yeah. interesting okay and uh you're gonna attack into the set that is fine okay it's my swarm nice uh, second main, that's all I can do. I'll throw it to you. Like how we got like one turn of gameplay. <laughs> all right. All right, I will draw. Oh, that's a wrap, bro. I'm sorry. All right, well, I mean, we'll kick it off. I will activate the change of heart and I'll take the Jinzo. I knew this was coming. Yep. I'll sack off the Jinzo to set and then I'm going to activate. This could be it. Uh, I'm going to activate wave motion cannon. Oh, was on the wave motion cannon. Thought so. <laughs> I just didn't so. see it at all, bro. I didn't see it at all. Okay. So, um, I mean, you got literally a turn, bud. So show me what you can do. Go ahead. It lets me. All right. Uh, we'll draw. Fantastic. Yeah, that's not going to do it. Yes. Okay. Uh, I will set one and set one. Over to you. Okay. Um, why would you not just concede? <laughs> um, I'll draw. Standby phase, that's one standby phase on wave motion. Sure. I'll go to my main phase one. Yep. Wave motion. Have I O, I'm not dead. Oh my, you should have waited a minute. You fucked up. Now I'll allow it. I will allow it because I'm a good friend. But if you didn't know, wave motion can and sense for cost, Alex. So it wouldn't be on the field anymore. Oh, because it only negates on the field. Oh, okay. Well, if it makes you feel better, I'm probably dead anyway. I so, think you're you still... Know. Well, actually, yeah, because yeah, I'm just going to actually chain MST to this. I mean, yeah, you could just do that anyway. Yeah, but honestly, so. yeah, like just flipping Guardian Sphinx does it. So I had yeah. nothing else, but good game. So where I think I fucked up this game, I... So back in the initial stages when we were trying to figure out the Swarm of Scarab stuff, and uh, I just forgot that I had IO, which apparently I have a tendency to do. So when I went ring the Scarabs and you went book, I could have IO'd the book and then you would have had to write geki break the io in order for all of that to resolve properly 
That may not seem like a big deal, but that means that my second cliff would have possibly connected, and then that way you wouldn't have had that initiative at that point. What was this? Uh, that was a magic drain. It was magic drain. Okay, so that wasn't actually going to do anything in that race. So, yeah, so that cliff would have connected then, and I wouldn't, at that point where you had Scarabs plus Lakuda, I would have been ahead at that point because Cliff would have killed the Scarabs. I would have popped the magic drain, which is kind of irrelevant in all honesty for this game anyway. Then when you drew Lakuda, I could have just had Cliff go into Lakuda. I could have set the guard instead of having to run it out in attack position. And I would have had control of the game at that point. So I really think I fucked up there. That also assumes that you would uh, Raigeki break the IO at that point. But I mean, it, you used it on the cliff. So I actually think that was the decision point where I messed up. We, I yeah. just got too tunneled when we were figuring out the Swarm of the Scarab stuff that I just forgot I had IO. So that loss is on me, if anything. But uh, I think we still had a good set, all things considered, even though I got fucking crushed. <laughs> yeah, I had to, like like I said, make a 180 on what I did last week because Reckless Greed's at one now and everything too. I figured it wouldn't be good to like go double back on the beatdown. But I wanted to see what was up with the uh, the stun and everything too with Wave Motion Cannon coming out. Uh, it actually gives like a win con to this deck i didn't yes. see it at all in game one and everything which i'm surprised i was able to win just through dudes but um the, the whole goal was to be able to lock you out of the game which i think this deck did really good and then you know be able to put you on a clock with wave motion cannon and eventually how many did you pull there. i pulled three okay i pulled one wave motion cannon which Ooh, is very annoying that yeah. is a, that's annoying what else do you get yeah. from magi uh, magician's so, force though Anything i was i was prepared that you were gonna play like basically this deck uh, or just straight up burn in some capacity. So I didn't main deck for it. I main decked for you still being on aggro because I thought you might thought that I was going to think that you were going to play <laughs> play uh, burn and then you would play beat down again to like double bluff me basically. So I was trying to like triple bluff you and I think I got way too ahead of myself. I think you got a case. little ahead of yourself too. Yeah. I was, I was so, just looking just in front of me here and I said, Alex played burn last yeah. week and it fucking sucks. So he's not playing burn again. <laughs> so, so I was like, he won't expect me to though. So that yeah, was No, I did. Back. I did. My sideboard was actually all stuff to counteract burn slash stun. So my sideboard like was two cliff the trap room. I had a, a main deck cliff and I had two in the side. I had triple, um, what else did I bring in here? I had the uh, two, I had swarm of locusts that I brought in from the side as well. And then I didn't side it in because I actually didn't think I would need it, but I guess it was uh, something I probably should have done. I had had the whole dragon package in the side deck so i oh, had yeah. i had spear stuff. dragon three gray wings and a dragon dwelling in the cave and three stamping destruction in the side uh to basically uh just take you out but i figured like between three cliffs and like two swarms and i also had regeki breaks and stuff as well i thought that might be enough and also my body is a nice card against your deck too because i could just my body swarm yeah so i was kind of like okay like whatever like maybe between these cards it'll be okay and then game three i was gonna side in all of the dragon stuff just because i felt like it made more sense when you were uh um, yeah, picking whether or not to go first or second maybe that was a miscalculation but like i felt like the rest of my deck was actually pretty solid all things considered but i guess not considering yeah. i got completely <laughs> i swept, just know but. it's super rough with you with any sort of back room removal and it's it's the same situation i found myself in last season so i i already thought you know unless you're playing those dragons again which that deck didn't do too well uh, i thought there was no spell or trap removal you had for the wave motion or like nightmare wheel and stuff like that so once i was able to even actually getting you down to like 1500 and then flipping the nightmare yeah. wheel i pretty much knew the game was over from there so yeah it was tough too because i was trying to think i really didn't want to use cyber jar on that board because i just didn't want to refresh our hands but i had I, the other issue too was once i saw you a change of heart this made it so complicated with jinzo because like i can't io change of heart with jinzo up yep. and like my life total was so low that you just change of hearting for jinzo or just change of hearting anything and then sacking it for guardian sphinx dealing with a set monster is also very just difficult naturally so that's why i had like the old video addictives magicians in here uh i mean exiled still a great way to do that gravekeeper guards like another one potentially as well but it's still just hard i that's why i had regeki break as well because like it's just so difficult to take out stuff because we don't have knock there's no like shield crush uh there's just very limited access to board wipes so guardian sphinx actually can put in a lot of work in this format in terms of the rest of mfc honestly aside from like old vindictive and cliff i don't think i played any new cards from the set uh i think the rest of my deck was just sort of like mid-rangey trying to like hold you off if you were on aggro but then also like having some stuff in case you went control uh and yeah i felt like it was pretty good but i think just the fact 
that I have lack of spell and trap removal just was a huge detriment to my strategy. Yeah, I don't think I got anything too crazy, and I didn't I didn't play much in Magician's Force either. Just really the uh, the wave motion cannons actually, and I think I think that's it. I think that's oh, the only I, thing I plugged in. I got two dark magician girls for Magician's Force <laughs> though. Yo, so let's go. Yeah, I, you know I can make them twenty six. Oh, I don't even have a regular dark magician, so I don't even know. But yeah, so that was terrible uh, luck on that regard. I think I also got uh, just random stuff that I'm never gonna play. I got like the XZ tank cannon. You know everyone's like. I got, I, got that too. I got a whole yeah. bunch of ultras and supers. I got a lot. I think the best super I got was like skilled dark magician, which is the 1900. I got one of those too. I was actually yeah. playing. I think I might have sided it out or it's still my main somewhere. But yeah, I just wanted like a big guy that had no downside. So yeah, I'm like, I yeah, got this. This works. Whole bunch of hollows, whole bunch of ultras. I got like, oh my God, I got two dark paladin. Which was so depressing. Oh my god! Yeah, so I was like, man, it wouldn't it be nice if this was just a breaker, the magical. So word. no breaker then. No breaker. I didn't okay, get anything same. relevant from magicians. All right, course. no tribe. No tribes. Nope, that would have been nice. Did you too. get magical scientist? I did, of course. Hey, it's okay. Fun. Hey, you didn't get dust shoot in Veronica Guardian, buddy. I didn't. You are right. So, you are right. That's why yeah. I was. You're always asking me in standby phase. You got anything? No, I don't. Like, <laughs> you may have other stuff. I don't know. I'm being respectful. I'm being courteous when I shouldn't be because you're kicking my ass this uh, season. I god. Am. The floor with you, bro. What Aren't was the wheel? Oh, I, I was waiting for you to ask it. I was literally just about to bring it up, man. We got a yeah, first it, on the wheel this week. Am I going to be as much of a nightmare as this guy is on your card here? And then it might be a little bit of a nightmare for you when I choose to unban any of the currently banned oh, cards. I got the first on. ticket. It's only fair, man. You banned fucking Monster Reborn for no reason. So now it's only fair I get what to What do you mean for no card. reason? Oh, you my did, God. You didn't work hard for that ban. <laughs> you rolled it on the wheel. I but, did. Just like you didn't work for this unban either but yeah fine. man all man, right so I'm what kinda, are you gonna unban oh i don't know i think maybe we should do it like we've done the banning too i think maybe we should leave the people in suspense i think so i think that's a good idea we need to have the unbanning <laughs> we do we need to have the unbanning i guess next week everybody will get to see which comes back from zero to one. So guys, that's gonna wrap it up for another episode. Let's go ahead and shout out the patrons as always. So big shout to Shout1317, Moto, Cameron Smith, Tim003, X3, Ian Musa, Chaotic Meeple, SJ Winchester, Part 2, Pony Stark, Dan the Man, Hoban, MBT, Play Medulce, Synchro Guy, Ole, Yusuf Asin05, Mystic Walk, I Ship MBT, and CMO, Draconic Rockside, Logan, Thomas, Peter Gregory, Thomas Nelson, Jordan Coons, Calvin, Iron Blades, and Purius, Jesse Wood, True Nergasm, Brother, Paul, Chris, So David Lou, Skyros, Dylan Hunter, John Two Base, Extremely Vulgar Man, Brody Eastwood, Day Sir, Carlos DT, Flannel Daddy, Hornet, Give Me Speed Reuter, Give Me Death, Jonah Messenger, Oh my God guys please read your cards cc gaming thanks for the sleeves dad matthew brady dire the egyptian editor max tom russell why read your cards when you can just click buttons ben snatch shield for prog 2021 helios 515 paint french girls like one of your mbts black acre say gauge gang engage three times fast the entire state of indiana d's cards mbt fans gaming more than covid simping for simo mark jackson tyler h justice for queen tiramisu and simo's harem of sexy yugi tubers thank you so much for watching the video and we will see you next time